following presentation is intended to accomplish two main objectives. First, provide staff members with up-to-date accurate information regarding cost containment measures resulting from the unsuccessful referendum on March 23rd. And second, to provide all staff with accurate talking points regarding the upcoming May 17th vote. Every employee in the district needs to actively engage in educating our community of what lies in the balance, our children and their academic, social, and emotional development. The consequences of a second defeat will have significant, immediate impact on programming and personnel as well as indirect ripple effects across the district, residual effects that will continue to linger well past a future successful referendum passage. It's important to remember that the angst and frustration that we're all feeling over the unsuccessful referendum is due in large part to the public school funding structure in Delaware. Our neighboring sister states have predetermined annual increases built into their local tax structure to provide the ongoing support needed to meet annual increases incurred by typical businesses and service providers. Delaware, on the other hand, requires its public school districts to ask its voters to increase local taxes every few years through referendum. Like it or not, it's a moot point. The bottom line is that we have to get a majority yes vote to pass this upcoming referendum. So what has occurred since the unsuccessful March 23rd vote? The failure of the March 23rd referendum request demanded that the district immediately implement cost containment measures and identify $8 million worth of cuts, eliminations, and reductions from its local revenue budget for the 2016-17 school year. To this end, the district has imposed an immediate budget freeze restricting all school and district budgets supported by local tax dollars. In addition, the district has made plans to eliminate or postpone summer work projects as part of the cost containment plan. While the district anticipates some savings to be realized from these measures, with only three months left of the school year remaining, the majority of these budgets have already been expended. Like any other district, Brandywine's largest expenses are employee-related in the form of salaries and OECs, other employee costs, such as health insurance, pension, Social Security, and the like. These costs account for 70% of the district's annual operating budget. With an $8 million deficit looming, all employee groups will feel the impact of personnel eliminations and reductions. The following staff reductions and eliminations have been proposed to the Board of Education for consideration. District Office and Building Administrators, District Office Support Staff and Building Level Support Staff. This includes Secretarial Staff, Specialists, and Mid-Level Professionals. Elimination of the Deans of Student Positions. Elimination of All Interventionists. A reduction in the number of teachers, reduction in the number of reading specialists, reduction in counselors, librarians, elimination of the strings program, and elimination and reduction of staff currently on special assignment. Total amount of staff reductions and eliminations listed would come in at about $3.3 .3 million. To make up the remaining portion of the $8 million, budgets and programmatic cuts would need to be made, including 15% reduction of all building budgets, 25% reduction of all district budgets, a 70% reduction of the district contingency fund, elimination of summer 2016 expenditures, including middle school and Harlan summer programs, Summer Driver's Ed Program, Summer Nurses Hours, Summer Hours for Counselors, and any summer position compensated through the use of EPR funds or casual seasonal employment. Other budget and programmatic cuts include 40% reduction of annual EPR, 
Elimination of EPER clubs, activities, and programs. Elimination of all sports programs, except high school varsity. Elimination of all after-school activity bus runs. And starting in the 2017-18 school year, elimination of intercession programming at Maple Lane Elementary. Total budget and programmatic cuts comes to $4.7 million. As employees of a school system, we know firsthand just how devastating the identified cuts will be for the children we serve and the certain repercussions and consequences to their educational experience, school climate, college and career readiness programming, teaching and learning, class size, the social and emotional development of our students, extracurricular activities, enrichment programming, and the district success plan will all be impacted. The lingering residual effect of a second failed referendum will take years to correct. You know the old saying, plan for the worst, hope for the best. The plan is in place for the worst, but hope for the best? The last thing we can afford to do is to sit around and hope for the best. It's time for each and every one of us to roll up our sleeves and get busy actively going out and getting yes votes to the polls. For the next three weeks, every one of us, from rookie to seasoned veteran across all departments, needs to champion the cause and work on getting the yes votes out. Each of us needs to understand and be able to share with members of the community we serve what's at stake in both the capital and operational portions of the referendum and why a yes vote is mission critical for our children and their academic, social, and emotional development. The next video, Invest Today and Impact Tomorrow, will provide specific talking points that you can share with family members, neighbors, friends, and any and all Brandywine School District community members in support of the referendum.